Found family is one of the most common tropes in media and occurs when a group of unrelated individuals form the bond of a family. It usually involves the individual characters having vastly different personalities and backgrounds and having to undergo obstacles throughout the plot in order to solidify their relationships. Today I'll go through some things writers have done well while writing found families and some places where I think found families can lack. Let's start with the found family that made me want to make this video. The main four in Hunter Excuse Me Hunter. When I first started watching the anime, I was in love with the dynamic of an optimistic main boy, his slightly more reserved best friend with whom he shares one brain cell, the most melodramatic bitch with the bowl cut, and the misunderstood babe who wants universal health care. When I first started watching Hunter XOXO Gossip Girl Hunter, I was hopeful about this dynamic. After all, they four went including a cold-hearted character, you know, the Sasuke type, which allowed more room for mushy talk of friendship earlier on. And I do think a strong foundation for found family comes from a group having to dish out their differences early on, which Hunter x Girlfriend Hunter does. We have the scene where the ship captain forces the main four sans Kilua to talk about their motives for taking the Hunter exam. And obviously Gon doesn't have any drama to provide, but Kropika lives for that shit and starts mocking Leorio, who in turn mocks Kropika. They fight and then they make up and Gon is just here for the ride. A bit later, Kilua skateboards in, hears that Gon is his age, and decides that must mean they have to be best friends for fucking ever. Hey, how old are you? Twelve years old. And I will always love you. So why do I love this setup? Well, for starters, I always love when there are different levels of intensity in characters' backstory. Similar to how I love the shoujo Blue Spring Ride because of Futaba's realistically basic character compared to Ko's sad backstory, I love that the characters in Hunter Expedition Hunter work similarly, and yet, the story never belittles how each character responds to their own struggles. In fact, the characters are nothing short of supportive of one another. The group goes through many trials to rescue Kilua, and then risks their safety in order to help Kropika exact his revenge on the Phantom Troop. It's nice. But this found family relies more on individual relationships as opposed to the entirety of the group as one. Like if I said, hey, split this squad up into two pairs, I wouldn't need to provide any detail for you to split it up like this. And why is that? Because Togashi can write individual dynamics better than group dynamics. So here's where I think the Hunter Expedia Hunter found family lacks. Their group dynamic is a bit surface level, and they end up working better as two well-fleshed out pairs compared to a group of four. Of course, this scene will always make me cry, but I stand by what I said. And none of this equates to bad writing at all. It's just that some writers write group dynamics better, and some write personal relationships better. Gone! And this guy, um, Kurabika? He remembered. Riolio! It's Leorio! I think the problem begins when two of the supposed main four just exit the plot for, like, the second half of the show. Obviously, I'm saying this from an anime-centered point of view because I can't bring myself to read the manga yet, but that's just how the crab pinches. So then what's a found family that focuses on the whole over the individual? The Owl House, in my opinion. And sure, it's easier to go this route if you have three instead of four, because there's no room to create imbalances and closeness. And it's impressive that Luce was able to so seamlessly enter a group that already had a dynamic. But after the initial episode, Ida and King both take a liking to Luce. And while each pair has a unique dynamic, with episodes devoted to exploring them, the entire found family gets most of the shine as just that, a found family. And the Owl House is unique for a few reasons. One, like I said, there's no Sasuke character. Maybe we can argue Amity, but she's not part of the found family. In addition, there's no sensible character. I'd argue Kurapika held this title in Hunter Example Hunter until he passed it to Leorio once he started angsting around in his formal wear. But in the Owl House, no one is responsible and it's created a very lighthearted tone that involves hints of chaos, and this only further highlights the serious moments that the group shares. And obviously this lighthearted take on Found Family makes more sense in an episodic show on Disney Channel, but I also think Found Family was more of the point of the Owl House than Hunter Excalibur Hunter, so it makes sense. And if I'm being honest, I don't think the Owl House has ever shown any weakness in its depiction of Found Family. Yet. Okay, so if we scale it out based on shows that focus on individual relationships compared to group relationships, I'd probably put Hunter Xbox Hunter here and The Owl House here. And if we try to find a middle, I think Kipo works. These four care about one another greatly, but each individual relationship works differently. What I mean by this is that while Wolf has a closer relationship with Kipo than the other two, unlike Kilua, I think Wolf would still go out of her way to protect them, and even if Kipo wasn't involved. 
Benson and Dave have one of the greatest friendships of all time, but I also love Benson's relationship with Kipo. And while the Owl House touched on slight tension within the group, I think it was handled differently than in Kipo. When Wolf hides information that could lead Kipo to finding her father, solely because she was worried Kipo would leave her behind, we have to face actual distrust in the group. Not just, King is jealous that Luce has friends and he's to learn his lesson about sharing, haha. Instead, we are touching on actual trust issues that are placed around flashbacks of Wolf's first family betraying her. Guess what? This literal exact thing happened in Avatar, and it makes perfect sense in exploring characters. Sometimes found families have to have problems, have to have obstacles to overcome beyond the surface level. In fact, nothing impresses me more than a found family that can make me so angry with a character and then at some point love them again. And to be honest, I was angry with neither Wolf nor Aang to any notable extent because they were kids and owned up to their mistakes. But some writers are so worried that the audience will stop liking one of their main characters that they forget to give them flaws. And I will say this has led into some weird form of protagonist that is like Mary Sue but not quite Mary Sue. Take me instead. Like if you take the three shows I just mentioned, you can't pretend there is no world of overlap between the protagonists. And hey, if it isn't broken, don't fix it. But I will say that I kind of get annoyed when a protagonist's main role is as some kind of glorified being of hope. Like, I love Kipo, but I feel her relationship with every single character had the same energy, and that led to her having a bit of a stale energy after a while in general. Wolf, on the other hand, approached different characters with varying levels of caution, trust, and closeness. Yes, this video was made by Wolf Appreciation Squad, what are you going to do about it? And that becomes a major issue with found families. And this may be a hot take and a personal take, so be nice to me. But I feel when we have a protagonist who is nice to literally everyone, their closeness to their found family feels more like a result of proximity than actual forged bonds. Like when I see Gon and Kilua, Kilua's closeness to Gon feels a lot more in depth than Gon's closeness to Kilua, because Gon is friends with everyone. And I really do love the trope of an overly optimistic, friendly main character. I just wish a few shows try to have some variety about it. Okay, so I know Ruby is objectively bad, but I feel like a lot of people trash on it for the wrong reasons, because believe me, there are many reasons to trash it. But the main group dynamic is something people seem to have a lot of shit with. I will agree with the masses in saying that the found family dynamic in earlier seasons hit harder than it does now, but I think this is partially because the newness of their found family has worn off after eight seasons, which makes sense and partially because of the character bloat taking away moments that Team Ruby could be having now. And to an extent, I think Rooster Teeth is listening, because there's been more moments between Ruby and Blake in this past season than the entirety of the show. But I also don't trust Rooster Teeth not to add another eight new characters next season, and ignore the fact that we haven't had much solid Team Ruby interaction in a hot second. Volumes 1 to 3 occurred when the characters were still fresh, still their hyperbolized selves. And of course, this meant that we had the kid who never learned how to work as part of a team, her older sister who doesn't take anything seriously, the objectively bad person, and then the local goth. And naturally, this led to a lot of tension and change, and now, the characters are all completely different than they started. The bonds are all completely different than they started. The found family dynamic is completely different than it started. In my opinion, since volumes 4 or 5, the found family dynamic has become a background aspect of the show compared to the persistence of the main plot. And I don't think this is bad, because after you get to know someone long enough, the relationship reaches a plateau where you think, yeah, this is my family. And that's it. And what I love about Team Ruby's dynamic is that they all have very different familial backgrounds, but none of this negates how Team Ruby has become a second family for them. Like Yang and Ruby's dad is great. Ruby's mom seems cool, but that bitch is dead now. Weiss's dad is a literal villain, her mom is going through some shit, and Blake's parents are the literal definition of MILF and DILF that I'd like to get to know but they still all rely on their team as a support system, because you don't have to limit who you can consider family. I also think a really important thing to focus on with found family is the circumstances of the meeting and being together. The culmination of these found families is almost never organic, and I don't mean that in a bad way. There's almost always a purpose for these characters coming together that forces them to work together, but doesn't necessarily mean that they don't have disagreements. And this is good because it paints them as being on the same quote-unquote side of things, but leaves room for their differences to create unique dynamics and conversations that lead to change in one, both, or all characters. Take The Good Place, where the main four couldn't be more different, where it's proven that they would have never come together as a group had not a literal demon intervened. And it's not just about good versus evil. 
the main four have such vastly different personalities, but form such a strong bond because of the danger of the situation they're in. Once again, the situation is key. And it's funny because two of the reasons these four characters have been tormented, be it intentionally or unintentionally, end up so inspired by their bonds that they end up forming a six-person found family. And like the other shows I've discussed, the main four in this show have vastly different experiences with family in the past. Overall, I think a found family should highlight the individual characters, providing them with the resources and reasons to develop as individuals. Because more important than writing a character is writing the way a character interacts with the world around them and how that changes them. And I think that's why found family is such a common trope. Chances are the writer was going to have a group of characters anyway, so why not make them have differences that will cause conflict to further the plot and growth? Why not make them forge bonds that will tug at the viewer's emotions? Like I said, and this is 100% personal, I wish the main characters of these found families had more depth than being the peacekeeper, and I wish emphasis wasn't taken away from the characters with potential in order to highlight the main characters. Because the second you make a found family at the forefront of your show, I'm sorry, but you're implying to the viewers that every member of this found family is going to be relevant. 